Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. On tap, we've got what should be a fairly intriguing matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Indianapolis Colts. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. They've been playing well, really well. Winners of five of their last seven, but losers last time out. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jaguars, they've certainly found their groove of late. Winners of five in a row. And I think the sky's the limit for this team. They're playing the best football that they've played in a long time. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They're led out by their six-foot quarterback. You may have heard of him from Purdue. It's Drew Brees. And he did everything possible to rally his team to a win last week, didn't he? What did he throw for? What? Over 450 yards. I mean, that's a pretty phenomenal performance. So, obviously, he and the offense were clicking pretty well. The other two-thirds, though, that comes into question. Defense and special teams, they'll need all of them to play better in this one, too. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. And we look now at the offense for Indianapolis. Ryan Kelly is a great example of how valuable the centers have become in the NFL. A former first-round pick, he was plugged in immediately to be a starter to handle big nose tackles as well as blitzing linebackers and also able to move and get out into the run game and get to the second and third level and deliver blocks. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and it'll be third and ten. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. A dump off for Davis, and they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. Foles and the Jags come up now first and 10 at the 20. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. And the offensive unit now for the Jaguars. And this team is coming in off of their open week, and to me, a pretty good time to have it, too, because it's pretty much right in the middle of the season. So I would think that they'll be pretty well rested and ready to go for the second half of the season. But even more importantly, they got a little bit of a mental break as well. That's going to help, too. On second down, here's Fournette. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. A quick throw complete to Chark. A gain of six there on first. 
A shotgun give to Fournette. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Now Foles. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. And they've been excellent against the pass. The number six unit in the NFL. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top ten in the league against the pass. But the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB. They'd easily move into the top five. To throw again on second down. Foles is going to let it's caught inside the 25. It'll go as an impressive 31 yard gain. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Here's Foles. That's to his running back, Leonard Fournette. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Now a carry for Dillon. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Give him 16 yards on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. So that'll back him up five. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. After the penalty, it's Fournette. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and no more. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And you know, certainly a lot of football left to be played. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're first place in their division, looking good, looking to be a threat come January. And let's think about what every team has in their goals, right? Number one goal is what? Make the playoffs. Number two goal is win your division. Number three goal, and the biggest goal, I think, is to be the highest seed possible that you can be heading into the playoffs so that you can have as many home games as possible to try and get you to the Super Bowl. And right now fighting for every win possible to try to at least secure home field for the wild card and or divisional round. On second down, Davis. They follow up the first down one-yard run with a minimal gain of two. Now Breeze on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see 
is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Watch the run, watch the run. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. 23 yards on the play. Let's go, boys, bring it up. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet, and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Boy, nowhere to go at all on that first down run as they will get to him behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. On second and 11 now. Foles. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A 14 yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 44 yard line. Now Leonard Fournette. Oh, Fournette loses it. It's out. And the Colts pick it up. And he's able to take this one back to the 36 yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Breeze now. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Throwing on second down, Breeze. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. To throw is Breeze. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. A pass there, complete to Westbrook. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. 
A gain of six there on first. Looking to throw again on second down. Foles, and that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Open man is Westbrook complete. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Foles now already over 100 yards passing in this first quarter. It's first and 10. They'll try the right side here with Fournette. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Now Foles off the play fake to Fournette. Completes it to Lee. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 25-yard line. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Pick me up. Here we go. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Foles. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. D.D. Westbrook, his second touchdown on the season. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead grows to 10 0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. From the gun on third down, Breeze. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Josh Allen. He's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. I remember when I was a kid, and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they, a dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Gearing up for their next possession, Nick Foles and the Jags. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. 
frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. A pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes us forward for about six. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. On the run, it's Fournette. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. DJ Chark, the intended target, but it'll be second down. Fournette on the counter, and an alley to run. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Foles now 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10, and he stopped immediately there. Jamal Sheard on the stop. Looking to throw on second down. Foles to the goal line, but it's incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and ten. They're going to look to throw. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Not at all what they envisioned on third down, three yards in the wrong direction. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Let's go! Let's go! There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people, find some other playmakers, but always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Breeze now, 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. And the pressure gets to Breeze as he's taken down. Give the sack there to Jake Ryan. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Breeze now to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. Okay, baby, I see you. 
so much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Second and two now. The penalty leaves them in pretty good shape. On the draw, this is Fournette. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Time for the next drive. We'll see what tight end Jack Doyle and the rest of this offense can do. Sitting right around the midpoint of the season, on pace for 1,000 yards. Good year so far, and I'm sure film study being devoted to him a little bit more on the other side. They have to because the pace that he's carrying right now, if you're, if you're pushing a 1,000-yard pace as a receiver, that means he warrants your attention. And right now, precision is going on with their offense, kind of like that timepiece you wear on your wrist, you know, that good stuff. Got to knock that off somehow, chip away at that timing, change things up a little bit, and make them go to other things and make them do those things better. Yeah, try to make them uncomfortable. Not many teams have been able to do that so far this year. He's got Jack Doyle. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. A.J. Boye up to make the tackle. They fake the give. Here's Breeze. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. From the gun, it's Breeze. Out of the backfield, he's got Jordan Wilkins. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. A gain of six there on first. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The sorry, coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Now Breeze. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception, but not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline.
Partner, they're less than two minutes to go in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Breeze to throw again. This goes underneath to Doyle. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Doyle. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Hey, it's our house. Again, it's Breeze. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Josh Allen able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now, and this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know, is a blind squirrel finding a nut, or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Roughing the passer, defense. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call, but they're usually spot. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jack Doyle, his fourth touchdown on the year as they are now on the board here in the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. And a lot of football, full half to be played. So here comes the kickoff. And what now is just a one score, six point game? This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL here on this first day of November. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In the game you're watching, it's the former Super Bowl MVP, Nick Foles, with the strong first half. His guys have the lead, as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. 
They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Fournette, a first down carry. Quincy Wilson in on the stop. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Here's Foles. And he completes it to Westbrook. The reception good for seven. It's third down. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. This is Fournette. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. On third down, here's Peyton. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now Foles. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in ten, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So three field goals that he's hit now. This last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Here now, a look at Drew Brees in our player spotlight. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? You feel like it always comes back to leverage, don't you? Who is going to win that battle of the offensive and defensive lines? Low man wins, we talk about that, but we think about it in a running game. Well, guess what? The same thing happens when you're trying to pass protect. Are you low? Are you balanced? Are you in a position where the pass rush won't bowl you over on their way back to the quarterback? They've got to reestablish that in order to try and keep their man upright. Because they have been bowled over a lot so far in this one. They run the counter. It's Hines. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Breeze on the bootleg. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down, so hang on. A big call coming on third down. They get the former number six overall pick, Quentin Nelson, out of Notre Dame that time. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? To throw, it's Breeze. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 
A gain of 22. So they're on that play. Offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. They keep it with Davis on first down. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Catch made here by Campbell. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Calais Campbell in there for sack number 85 of his great career, moving him past Hall of Famer Howie Long on the all-time list. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. It's a gain of four, but they're still looking up here at a tough third and 11. Now Breeze on third down. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. And yeah, they'll have good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down. He's got it. Hit the 15. And he'll be taken down, but go, first he go. gets deep into Indianapolis go. territory. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great, and what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run with Fournette. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Second and goal from the one. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. Josh Oliver. 
His first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. No lead safe in the new NFL, but this score is really going to give them some needed breathing room. Now Doug Marone not even hesitating. They're going to go for two. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. They will run it. It's Fournette. And he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead is going to stay right where it is. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Here's a handoff to Hines to begin the drive. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Davis. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and 10. Now Breeze. This to Hines on the drop off. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he loses the football a second time. And I believe the Colts have recovered. Yes, they have. Oh, we got it. We Partner, got it. that would look like it was over. Job, I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Bree's going to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Hines. And he'll be brought down well short of the first at about the nine-yard line. Call it a gain of three. And that'll bring up fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. So they recovered the fumble, but ultimately could not take advantage of the short field. Definitely a lost opportunity right there. I mean, they were in prime position to put six on the board. Ended up settling for three. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. you got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Now falls off the play fake to Fournette. His throw incomplete. 
The Jaguars on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. Foles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Second and ten. The open man is Westbrook. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 35. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. They'll set up to throw. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And this is caught. 33 yards that time. What a game it's been for this duo. They remind me of a good comedy team. They know how to play off of each other so well. No matter how one riffs, the other's right there to pick them up. And they are shredding them in this ball game. A quick throw complete to Chark. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. And this Fournette territory here, and he's alone in the backfield on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That'll wind up going for a loss of four, and that is going to set up third and goal. They need to reverse the trend. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal, and it's caught. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. And his kick is indeed good. And that will extend their lead even further. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's fallen off. When a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So he's one person he can lean on. He's going to have to lean on that guy right now. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Breeze to throw. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Davis, he'll try to run for it. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves them with a very manageable second and one. 
Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Defense. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty is a result of that hit there. After the penalty, it's Davis. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. In the backfield, standing alone here on second and goal is Davis. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. They'll try to run with Hines, and they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I know this is your spot, partner, so forgive me for jumping in, but there's no decision right here. They have to go for it in this situation. They're down on the scoreboard. How many other opportunities are you going to get? Yeah, I'm with you. Fourth quarter, like you said, down on the scoreboard. And remember here, a field goal virtually does them no good. They go for it on fourth and goal, but that winds up incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Jaguars are able to come up with a goal line stand. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Fournette, and for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain that time, as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. He'll look to throw. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Now that's a big pickup right there. And so often we focus on how the quarterback's faking on play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels. You could see them trying to recover. They bit. Worked out offensively. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette, and they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Again, it's Fournette, and they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and here we go again. On first down, Breeze. And that gonna be incomplete, too tough to hold on to that one, it's second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw is Breeze. He'll check this down to Hines. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. A.J. Boye with a pick. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one.
Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And barring mistakes, they should be able to kneel this one out and finish it off. And there's only one timeout remaining on the defensive side of the ball, so that doesn't really come into play either. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Fournette running right. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. On third down, Fournette. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And I know I'm not breaking any news when I say that any road win in this league is a good one. No doubt. But it's a double bonus when you get a victory on the road in your division. And when you start a season, each team breaks down their schedule in different ways. Some do it every four games, right? Let's go quarterly. Others say, listen, we've got to take care of our home field and, you know, out of a 16-game season, if you get eight at home, let's at least win seven at home and split our road games. That's what you're trying to get done. So you're exactly right. A road win, precious, especially within the division. So for Jacksonville, they close out this first half at a very solid 6-2. and two, And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Indianapolis, they'll fall to 5-3 and three with a loss.